morning so after my first video the main request that i got from you guys was more information on perimenopause i totally get that i feel like there's not a whole lot out there so i am gonna talk about that a little bit mostly we think about menopause right that's kind of oh the symptoms of menopause but really menopause you guys is defined by you've had 12 months with no period no bleed right and you've had three consecutive blood tests with your FSH, which is just a, a hormone measure, um, that's over 30, right? And, and that's, so your period, you look back and you say, oh, now I'm in menopause, that's retrospective. Where everyone is having symptoms though, you guys, is like the, people will say seven years, I've really, symptoms can start anytime after 35, honestly, um, before menopause and the average age of menopause. So the average age at which a woman can look back and say, it has been 12 months since my last period or bleed and I have three consecutive FSH tests over 30. That average age is 52, I believe, 51 or 52. We're looking at all of our 40s and a lot of times our late 30s as well. That is why perimenopause really needs more attention because I feel like you guys, that's the part in our life where we're just starting to feel like not ourselves and no one is helping us with that and we're not, we're not, no one is saying, oh, it could be your hormones. No one is saying, this could be, there's a, there's a reason for this. Maybe you're not mentally ill. Maybe you are not. Maybe you are still yourself in there and your hormones are just imbalanced because of what happens, what starts to happen in our late 30s, early 40s and beyond. This is what happens, you guys, in perimenopause. When we're young and naturally cycling, right? We have all three of our hormones, estrogen or estradiol, especially testosterone and progesterone and so and those happen and are pulsed from our bodies in a cyclical way throughout our cycles right we get our period our hormones are all pretty low and then as we go along toward ovulation our estrogen will spike and that will help us release an egg testosterone spikes before ovulation as well which is why we get an increase in libido around ovulation time which makes sense right more interested in it's just genetics and the way that our the way that we're designed we're going to be more interested in sex around the time when we can get pregnant which is so frustrating for young women who are not trying to get pregnant but that is how it works then once we do ovulate one egg is released from one or or sometimes both ovaries but usually just one and when it's released, there's the ovary, egg is released. It leaves this little thing called the corpus luteum. It's almost like a popped zit, you guys, if you see it on an ultrasound. And this corpus luteum pulses out progesterone, which is a beautiful hormone. Um, it's responsible for keeping pregnancies, sustaining pregnancies, progestation, progesterone, right? But it also has a whole lot of other amazing health effects. It, the, the two that are really important are going to be they help with sleep and they help with mood. Insomnia and anxiety tend to be the, the biggest hallmarks of low progesterone. What happens as we get older, right? So we're used to having these fertile normal cycles and we're making progesterone every month. Well, as we get older, we start to have what we call more anovulatory cycles. That means we are not ovulating every month. So what happens when we don't ovulate every month? We don't make progesterone, right? So we end up with a symptoms of estrogen dominance. Too much estrogen, not enough progesterone, which can make you feel itchy from the inside out. It can make you feel really irritable, really tender, sore breasts bloating, low metabolism, because progesterone raises your body temperature and it makes your, raises metabolism at the same time. And you know, your hair can start to fall out. Progesterone is really amazing for hair. If you think about pregnant women who have the highest levels of progesterone, right? They have this luscious hair and then they have the baby, their hormones drop and all their hair falls out. They're starting to find that giving women a little bit of progesterone even after they give birth. Um, not only helps to prevent vanity things like hair loss, but it also helps to really prevent a lot of the depression and mood issues that the women face after they give birth that are totally natural. And that a lot of women are at home feeling like, oh, I'm, I'm a failure as a mother. No, you just lost all your hormones. You're, you're, it's going to affect your mood, that's natural. So as we start to get older and have more and more anovulatory cycles, and by the way, you can have, still have a regular period and bleed every month and still not be ovulating every month. That's something to keep in mind. People think, oh, I still have regular periods. I must be ovulating every month. That is not necessarily the case. 
Um, the only way you'll know if you're ovulating every month is if you're taking your temperature every single day. Like, you know, keep a thermometer by your bedside table and put it, take your temperature every morning at the same time before you get out of bed. And you can log it on an app like Fertility Friend and it will chart. And if you see a temperature rise of about half a degree, sort of two weeks before you would get your period and it stays up and then you get your period, then you ovulated. If you're not seeing a temperature change, then you're not ovulating. And that's some, t it's a good time to talk to your doctor and our practitioner about what that could be and getting further testing. If, if you're having symptoms of low progesterone, like anxiety and insomnia, hair loss, that kind of thing. And incidentally, when it comes to hormones, testosterone gets the most attention when it comes to libido. But I found that even when I replaced my testosterone, yes, it helped my libido a little bit, but it really wasn't until I added on the progesterone and perimenopause that I feel like my libido really got back to where I knew it was. And, and you guys, I think this makes a lot of sense. If the symptoms of low progesterone are insomnia, and anxiety. Who's going to be interested in sex, ladies, if you are not sleeping and you're anxious? I certainly wasn't, right? And as soon as I got those both balanced, uh, and, you know, and typically in perimenopause, we're looking at microdosing those two hormones that get to low in perimenopause, which are testosterone and progesterone. Testosterone particularly can be low you know, even in your 30s, if you've ever been on hormonal birth control, because it permanently raises sex hormone binding globulin that binds up your free testosterone, you might be, if, if, you, if you suspect low testosterone, even in your 30s, and you've been on the pill, you might want to, it might be a good thing to check, because that can affect your libido, your mood, your motivation, your ability to put on muscle mass, and energy. It's the, the get bleep done hormone, get done hormone. It makes you want to get up, get dressed, get out of the house, it's a great hormone, but all hormones are important. They all make us who we are. And I think the bottom line in perimenopause that I hear from most women is that I don't feel like myself, right? And there's nothing worse than that. And so we just want to feel like ourselves again. And that's, that's psychologically, that's the important part. The other part, you guys, even if you're not having symptoms, if you're in your forties, you're in perimenopause, essentially. Really, I had one doctor, my favorite one of my favorite menopause doctors that I've learned from. He he had a post one time and he said, the luckiest patients are the ones who actually are symptomatic in perimenopause and menopause because it gets them to the their practitioner, you know, their MD, NP, PA, DO, to address the symptoms they're having. Because the problem is, you guys, yes, the symptoms are annoying, the hot flashes, the moodiness, the weight gain and everything. What is happening on the inside though is that you're without our hormones, it, we are experiencing an increased risk of heart disease, dementia, diabetes, urogenital tract issues, pain during intercourse, UTIs. And uh, this is going on in the background, whether or not you're symptomatic. If, even if you're someone who isn't sure they want to replace hormones, in perimenopause or menopause, it, you may want to talk to your doctor and do a little research on it because even a small amount of hormone replacement, and especially in those early years, the studies on it are really impressive on, on what it does to prevent diabetes, dementia, heart disease, osteoporosis, and your genital tract issues. Check it out. Talk to your doctor, of course, because I am not one, but my job as a health coach is to help you and give you information and hopefully make your relationship with your own practitioner more useful and fruitful because sometimes we only have seven to 15 minutes with them, right? Perimenopause, we are typically looking at a loss of progesterone. We're still making lots of estrogens. We're dealing with estrogen dominance. That feeling can be sort of increased allergies, lower metabolism, the sore breasts we talk about the anxiety, the moodiness, um, abdominal weight gain, and insomnia. But it also comes with low testosterone, and I think that happens naturally as we age, but I think so many of us, I think almost everyone I know has been on hormonal birth control at some point, like the pill, or any, other, any of the other forms of synthetic hormonal birth control, which can affect our testosterone levels for the rest of our lives. There's some really interesting studies on that. But, um, so it's a time to check, right? Because when those things are out of balance and you start to feel like you're not quite yourself, um, it, that's, it, it, this is one of the things that it could be. Um, and I like this because look, so many women go to the doctor with these symptoms and say, I just, I'm feeling 
I'm feeling depressed or I'm feeling anxious. I can't sleep. I don't have any libido. I'm gaining weight. And they get put in this box of they're mentally ill or depressed, anxious, otherwise labeled. And look, there may be some depression and anxiety on top of some of the hormonal imbalance. But what I love about functional medicine is that we're going to say first, before we, we hit you with an SSRI or some Xanax, things that are going to really not help you be your best self, right? Xanax can be not great for the brain and cognition. Um, we all know that SSRIs come with their own side effects like sexual side effects. You already have no libido and now you're taking an SSI and now you really don't have libido. Maybe we look at your hormones first and see. Actually, well, how old are you? If you're you know, after 35, if you're 35 or older, let's check your hormones. Let's at least try that first. And then we can always layer on top, right? I love conventional medicine and functional medicine working together. I, I love it all, but I just love, I have really benefited from the microdosing of my testosterone and progesterone in perimenopause. And I'll show you what I use. I have a prescription for uh, oral micronized progesterone. It's 100 to 200 milligrams a night. I take at night. The reason you take, and this is bioidentical, and usually I don't love oral hormones, but progesterone is different. The way it's metabolized in the liver, you guys, it creates allopregnanolone, which is a metabolite, and it makes you nice and sleepy and nice and calm. We love that one to take at night. Now, if you're using an over-the-counter progesterone cream, which, which those are available, you can also get your doctor to write you a prescription for a compounded progesterone cream. It will be covered by insurance. But if you do that, the cream is just absorbed in the skin. I use the progesterone cream on my chest just every morning. It doesn't affect your sleep. It doesn't make you sleepy. But the, the oral micronized progesterone that is a prescription, you take that at night, it really does help with sleep so much. And then my testosterone cream is a compounded prescription from my doctor that I get filled from a compounding pharmacy here where I live. Replacing progesterone, replacing testosterone really helps in perimenopause. And this is why we still have our estrogen. Yeah, you guys, last time I got my estrogen checked, it was very high still. Um, it was right around ovulation. It makes sense. Um, but I wouldn't want to be putting an estradiol patch on myself in perimenopause. Um, it would really make the estrogen dominant situation worse. But um, I will be continuing to do that program until I reach actual menopause. And I don't know when that will be. Everyone is a little bit different. I always say, ask your mom, when did she go through menopause? And that's a, that can be a good indicator. Not every, not every single time. But, but And then when I am in menopause, when it's been 12 months, I've had no bleed, no period, and I have three consecutive FSH tests over 30, then I will add estradiol back and my estrogen, and all my hormones are basically flatlined, although I don't think I'll ever allow my progesterone and testosterone to get that low because I'm already supplementing. I don't plan to ever stop. I guess I will be just adding an estradiol patch. That's a prescription for, for menopause. But really, right, most of us are symptomatic in these times of perimenopause. And so I guess two things, you don't have to suffer if you feel like you are not yourself or you're experiencing some of these symptoms, the anxiety, depression, insomnia. Again, you're not a bad person. You're not fundamentally flawed. You have not lost yourself. This is, there's just not a lot of education out there about what is happening during perimenopause. We're sort of left to our own devices. Um, and fortunately, when we reach out to our practitioners, I would say, the vast majority of my coaching clients have the experience of being what I call medically gaslit, where they say it's all in your head. This is a, you must be depressed. Here's your antidepressant, your anti-anxiety and your sleeping pill um, without any other sort of testing or questions. It's just, you're broken here. Let's just mask the symptoms. And I feel like you, you guys, the sad part about this is I have worked with hundreds. I don't even know how many coaching clients at this point in, in my in my career. These women have so much to offer the world. You guys are, we're all, we're just, we're badasses in our own way. And this world needs more people. We need more people at their very best. And to just write off half of the population as soon as they're finished basically having babies for us, not only is a disservice and a disres and is very disrespectful to those, to us as women, it's not good for the world. We're losing all those gifts. Women 
miss a whole lot of work because of perimenopause and menopausal symptoms that they don't realize they haven't helped been helped to say oh this is there's a connection between these two i think it's bigger it's bigger than that you want to be everybody wants to feel like themselves you want to age in a way that that you're avoiding these diseases uh, chronic diseases of aging like heart disease dementia diabetes abdominal weight gain heart disease um, osteoporosis these things but we want to continue to bring our best selves to the world, to our relationships, to, to work, to our kids. This is why I'm super passionate about it. It's, it's one of the main things that I do is help my coaching clients find practitioners, um, and I have a list going, who really are committed to hormone proper hormone replacement, bioidentical hormone replacement, all three hormones, not just one, and knowing that there's a there's a balance and trying to find your optimal, which might be a little different. Do your research. That's perimenopause in a nutshell. I hope that helps.